suppose I kick my textbook down the hallway. So after it leaves my foot, it's moving some speed. I'll call it V0. It slides down the hallway, stopping at some later time. I'll call it T1. So finishing out this, let me give it a coordinate system. Call that direction X. This will be at some T0, at some initial position. This will end at some later position with a later speed, which we know to be zero because it slows to rest. Since it's slowing down, velocity is this way, we know that the acceleration would be this way. And I can start listing things that I know. Suppose I know, as always, I can choose my time to start at zero. My coordinate system says my position starts at zero. And let's say the kick, you know, as soon as it leaves my foot, is traveling at three meters per second. Okay? And now, um, I don't know my acceleration. I do my, know my final time. Let's say that's three seconds later. You can see I'm being lazy with my numbers, so the calculations are straightforward. I don't know where it ends, but I do know how fast it's going. That's a, a hidden zero there. That's uh, v1 equals zero because it stops. Okay. Now we've done problems like this with kinematics and I might ask what's the acceleration? Well we're going to take it one step further to make the connection with forces through Newton's second law and I want to find the size of the frictional force. So find F. I'll use this little lowercase f to define frictional force. And so I know, I can just globally, I can recognize that, well, the connection between forces and kinematics is the acceleration. That's what's important. So before I can proceed, though, we need to finish out now, since this is a dynamics problem involving the forces, we need to have a free body diagram. So in my mind, I'm going to identify forces. I'm going to circle the box here. And it doesn't matter where it's at, the forces are acting all over uh, throughout the whole motion. So I'm going to circle this box and say, okay, well, it's got force of gravity acting on it. So my free body diagram should have that. And it's interacting with this the, the hallway floor uh, via a normal force holding it upward and a frictional force that's slowing it down. Okay, so identifying that mentally. Now I'm going to write, um, a draw a coordinate system here. I'm going to have my x to be in the same direction as what I've defined my kinematic values. Okay, that's going to be important. And y really doesn't matter too much here, but we're going to do it to emphasize the process. Okay, so looking at this, I had identified three forces, so I need to have three vectors on here. One would be this force of gravity. I know point straight down. And one would be a normal force pointing straight up and I can draw them at the same length because I know the acceleration is only horizontal. There is no vertical acceleration and so I know that that would give me no net force in that vertical direction which then would imply these are of equal length. Okay. I know the acceleration is to the left which means my net force must be to the left Okay, because the net force always points in the direction of the acceleration, which means my frictional force, this only other force I have, must be pointing to the left. And I'll give it that subscript, or that label, lowercase f. Okay, now this allows me to um, organize and make sure I have accurate all the forces acting in what directions. And so now, I can translate that into the equation. So up to here, all this is a complete pictorial representation. It's got the picture with labels defined and a coordinate system. It's got as many knowns I, I, I have, especially those that are hidden zeros. Like again, stopping means V1 equals zero. I've got what I'm looking for, and now I, I include a free body diagram with this with all my forces. In this case, all the forces lie along the coordinate systems, but if I had some at angles, I would have to decompose those to the coordinate systems, like I did with acceleration in two dimensions or anything of that nature. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try and find this. I'm going to add one more thing that I do need to know. I'm going to state that this box has mass m. I'll go ahead and list that in my list of notes here. And we'll say m, just to keep it simple, is 1 
kilogram. Okay, it's one kilogram. All right, again, our goal is to find F. Okay, so to start, um, let's go ahead and see how we can find F. I'm not going to worry in this video about doing the Newton's second law in the y direction. Um, in the future, we'll find that the frictional force is related to the normal force, but right now I'm just trying to find out how big it is. Um, uh, um, so I won't need that. And so for brevity, I will not worry about the y coordinate, but I am going to look at the x coordinate. I'm going to say x, my x um, uh, uh, dynamics. So I'm going to write f net x equals max. All right. And I know that my f net is um, uh, only this way, and so that is going to be my frictional force, and it is negative. Okay, it is negative, and so um, my the magnitude I write as this variable, and I apply the minus sign here, and uh, that is consistent. So now I can write equals m. Right now I don't know my a, but I'm going to um, try and find that um, later. So I'm just going to write a here. So my ax, I put a because that's how I have a label. There's no no y component. So now I've got a pause. Okay, I have f related to a, and I'm going to um, uh, now have to find a through our standard means through kinematics. So looking at this, I know a lot about the velocities, a lot about the time, and so that makes me want to now use my kinematic equation, the definition of acceleration of v1 equals v0 plus a um, a times the time period, which is t1 minus t0. Okay, now in this case, v1 is 0, t0 is 0, so a is equal to, and I'm going to have to subtract the v0 over and divide down by the t1, and so I get that. So now, Done with the physics, plug in the numbers, I get a negative 3 over 3, giving me a negative 1 meters per second squared. Okay? Now, I should get a minus sign because I've chosen to the right being positive, and this acceleration I have determined is to the, to the left, making it negative. So now taking that and plugging in here, I have enough to solve for the magnitude of f, and so now I can say that f is a negative ma, which is equal to a negative 1 kilogram times negative 1 meter per second squared, and I get 1 kilogram meters per second squared, which is 1 newton. Okay. So it's a 1 newton force to cause it to slow down over 4 seconds. Um, so again, reviewing those units, kilograms, meters per second squared is a newton, or uh, mass times an acceleration. So this is an example of a full dynamics problem, fairly simple in its orientation, but the process falls through. We do all our kinematic setup like we would normally. We list all our knowns. Now we'll start listing other things, like the mass is important here. And then the biggest thing that's in addition is this free body diagram that includes one vector for every force we've identified, and then any vectors that are pointing uh, not along a, a component, or not along a coordinate, needs to be decomposed onto it. In this case, we didn't have that. And then this translates to a Newton's second law for each component that we have. And in this case, we skip the y just for brevity. Writing it out with choosing the sign, so putting all our forces of magnitudes and letting algebra take care of their directions here. And then this was a review of previous stuff doing kinematics and finally finding our answer.